guys Jagveer Singh back with another video of Master Camp 2020 and in this video I will tell you how to make the lathe finishing operation I'm just going to continue with the same place where we left with the last operation we did was lathe roughing in which I told you how to make the profile of this particular shape and then cut the raw stock material into the given shape so you can see that the stock material which was initially a rectangular shape turned out to be a given so called profile which is still not yet perfectly made because if we can see that we still have this kind of groove that we need to clear in order to reassemble the shape. In last video I think I forgot to mention about what exactly lead in and lead out are and how they work. So when you click on lead in and lead out as I turned it in so, so the purpose of lead in and lead out is so by default in some of the cases your lead in might not be activated so that's why I came here to refer to you like what exactly you need to do in order to uh, make changes so you turn on this extend or shorten start so basically we are going to extend it so the purpose of lead in is that when you are going to bring your tool from from the right hand side you want to make sure that there is enough space before the before the tool enters. So the lead-in ensures that this particular amount is coming from the right hand side because the tool is coming from the right hand side and going in. So that's why this direction we can also change the direction if you want. But in this case, this is going to be the ideal direction for the tool to enter in order to cut the material. So we are saying that we are going to extend the distance from the stock itself by one millimeter between the tool and the stock and then it is about to cut so let's say that we have a small chamfer here so it will consider that this chamfer is extended by one millimeter and it will cut according to that so that will that is also another precaution in order to make sure that the tool doesn't crash with the part or something else destructive might not take place within the work area you can also keep different amounts but I would recommend you to keep no more than 1.5 you also need to so this is kind of a rule of thumb whichever amount you are going to change here you can change the same amount on the length as well similarly when you go to lead out that is basically the angle at which you want to go out of this let's let you guys know so you in, in lead out so once your operation is completed right here you want the tool to go back straight up so for the same you're just extending the lead out that it extends up slightly more and then it goes up in the direction so so that, that is the main function of lead in and lead out that I want to clarify before going to finishing and click OK so now let's start with the finishing itself so I have my finish right here so now they are asking me to select point or chain contour just like the way we did for the roughing I'm going to select this particular line Luckily, I have the direction this side, so I need not to reverse the direction. If your direction is showing like this, you have to click on reverse in order to make sure the arrows are upwards. Then they are asking you to choose the last entity. You click on last entity right here, and the whole line is selected. You click OK. So now, for the finishing, we need a sharp tool, because finishing is going to be cutting off small junk of material and it should be very precise this time with respect to the dimensions that we want to have so in roughing we left some of the material just for the finishing so that we don't need to cut a junk of material and we get a precise part as well so right here you can also use 55 degrees but don't forget every time to only choose right hand tool because we are 
assuming that the tools are right handed inside the machine itself and all the, all the tools are supposed to come from the right hand side and then do the cutting phase so just like you can also use 55 degrees but I would recommend for a better finishing use 35 degrees it is a better and more sharp tool that's why the corner radius is also small it is easy to compensate as well so spindle speed and maximum spindle speed as I told you according to the tools also the machine capabilities for finishing it is slightly high I will go for anywhere between 800 you can also keep it to be like a thousand to 3500 if needed you can turn on the coolant and for the same so the step over is how much do you want to cut in one shot and we also have the option to select the number of finish passes well if you want to save time then just one finish pass is recommended but to have a better finishing and if you don't have to make so many parts inside the machine then I, I would recommend to go with two or three passes as well if you can do so it all depends on condition as well so I will go for the finish step over to be 0.1 just to be more defined and more precise when I go to lead in and lead out so finishing lead in lead out are very important so we want the tool to come in here I click on and I want it tend to be by one similarly the length to be one as well and extend it should go straight by one and one as well well sometimes there might be a tool collision if possible then the only factor is going to be the extending of the finishing parameters that it might take into consideration so if it works then then it's good if we see a tool collision then it is going to be just because of this parameter I'm pretty sure about that so so in this case we see that inside the profiles we have a depth we have a deep cut which is which we can see with respect to the profile so in this particular case if we go straight there are continuous increments of decreasing and increasing profile respectively but just because of this one groove there is inconsistency within the profile so we need to compensate that we use the plunge parameters so what does plunge allow us to do is it allow us to be close to the grooves just in order to also cut some junk of material through the grooves as well so we choose so you can see as for the drawing right here we want to allow plunging in relief in order to make sure that we cut the deep part precisely as well so whatever the tool finishing tool is able to cut through the groove it will try its best to go inside and cut the excess material and for the rest finished materials we need to go and do the grooving which I will show you in next video we can we will go and verify it and see how it works click on isometric I have my stop collision condition on I go for it and there we have the finishing so you can see that it went twice because I made sure that I want two finish passes inside the finish so that is it for this video and please like subscribe and share the video and don't do not forget to subscribe my channel for sure and share it with your friends I will be posting similar kind of videos and in next video if you will see how the groove function works how the groove operation works and the parameters related to it and I will also tell you one funny feature about that at the very end when we are all almost done with the entire part. Thank you so much.